thanks for joining me on the first episode of Brewing with Becky, Tack Talks. Um, I have two very special guests with me today, my lovely teammates, Pauline Bramer and Ellen White, and we are at Tack Coffee House, enjoying some coffee and chatting all things women's football. So we are going to introduce our coffees, uh, because that's just what we do here. It's going to become a tradition. And um, yeah, so Pauline, go ahead and go first. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, today I've gone for a black Americano, as I usually do, because I just like the, the real taste of the coffee, and they do it quite, quite well here, so yeah, I like it. All right, and um, Ellen, what, what did you go for? Um, I really want to just copy Pauline, to be honest, because she's cool. Um, so I've gone for black Americano, but normally Good choice. I'm a bit of a cappuccino lover, um, so good quality milk mixed with good coffee and tack does amazing coffee so uh yeah it's a good combination lovely and uh i'm on coffee number two which could be detrimental to later in the podcast when i start talking at a million miles an hour you'll all know i'm just slightly over caffeinated Uh, i went for an americano with milk at the beginning and now i'm indulging in a iced oat milk latte because although it's winter it is sunny outside you are wild aren't you wild (laughs) really wild Uh, um, so, yeah, the topic today is women's football, which we could, I'm sure, talk about for a lot longer than this podcast is going to last. But uh, we have a few different directions I want to go in, so uh, we'll kind of see see where it takes us. But we'll start with the with the Women's World Cup, because we have three people here that have quite different perspectives on, on how the tournament went and um, what it's done for, for women's football since. So we'll start with Ellen. Obviously, the Lionesses having a great showing at the 2019 Women's World Cup and of course you individually um, scoring loads of goals we saw loads of the celebration which personally I was a big fan of um, don't tell tell that to anyone because I wasn't supposed to be a fan of anyone else in the tournament but it was yeah don't tell Canada that <laughs> <laughs> guys it's fine it's fine um, so yeah talk us talk us uh, through you know what the tournament was like for you and um, what it was like for the Lionesses and for, for the FA it was alright the end um, no <laughs> um, yeah no the whole World Cup was, was incredible um, to, to be in France it, for for me as well being English it was really close to England which meant that a lot of family and friends not just for myself but you know all my teammates as well could travel over so that was incredible to have their support um, but generally as a tournament um, I think they've done it really well um, and you know going into my third World Cup it was an amazing achievement really and it was really cool she's old I'm really old actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so old young at heart young in the body she still, she still runs well <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, it was it. Was, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of reflections, really. Obviously, ultimately, we wanted to win the World Cup. That was our main goal, but we didn't quite kind of match USA in the, in the semi final game. Um, a lot of learnings from that. But I think what we did achieve back home was just the amount of support and exposure that we got back home was just yeah. insane. Um, and you know, the amount of people now kind of watching women's football or talking about it. And I think that's really important. And that's something to really take away from the World Cup. Um, not just just, you know, what we did on the pitch, but also off the pitch um, with the amount of support. But um, yeah, it was it was an amazing World Cup, but I would have loved to have won it at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> what did we all yeah, have? Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, I think even... Pauline, you can speak to this too. Like from last year to this year, just the difference in in support of women's football here in this country. Like um, I know in Canada, like the 2015 World yes. Cup had such a massive yes. impact on young girls playing the game. You know, young kids in general, boys and girls. And then just I think some of the the crowds that we saw at at our games um, at home between the 2015 World Cup and, and this World Cup have just it's been massive. But um, what do you think? the main difference has been that you've seen Pauline since since the World Cup this summer just playing in England as uh, as a German yeah I mean um, it's just growing I think in England um, especially you can see that in the stadiums there's more games getting into the big stadiums as well which helps massively to get more more fans uh, to come and watch the game and um, I think which is also what's also good is that we have the FA player now where the games are all streamed that helps my family as well back in Germany so they can actually watch the games and I think that just attracts people and brings the game um, a bit closer to them so yeah definitely um, so England obviously having a great showing um, you know 
for us at the World Cup, um, it was a bit of a weird story for us, I feel like, because we had a group where the competition level continued to get harder as the group went on. So, like, obviously we started with Cameroon, who, which was quite a difficult game, if I'm honest. Just, you know, they're so physical and a bit unpredictable as African countries. And then, you know, we had a really, really good performance against New Zealand um, and felt, like, so confident going into the third game. And then you start to think about, you know, all the what ifs that happen once the third group game comes along because you have you have teams that you think okay well they you know they've qualified for the round of 16 so do you rotate the squad do you you know do you play your best 11 do you try and win and top the group and um you know we had a really tough game against against holland and it's just so weird to think about looking back on it now had we won that game they were in their position that took them all the way to the final. Mm. So it's yeah. like, when you think yeah. about it, it's like, oh man, that could have been us if we would have just won that one game. So I think that's a huge learning, hopefully, you know, playing in another World Cup in the future, just that like, you really got to do everything you can to win all three of the group games and, yeah. and put yourself in the best was, position. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, actually. Did your mindset kind of change going into that third group game then? Was it all out to win or was it? Or were you looking at kind of other routes or, or who you might face or that type of thing? I think as a team our mindset is you know win every game yeah, I yeah. feel like when you're a top team in the world probably between all three of us our teams are, are that way you yeah. know you want to win yeah. win every game and I think you know you gotta you gotta beat the best teams to win the tournament so whatever journey you go on uh, would have been difficult. I mean, we would have faced Japan yeah. in the round of 16, which I thought they Tough were game. so good at the World Cup and, playing, so. and got eliminated. Love playing against them. Wait, so <laughs> got, no, yeah, I, I really like <laughs> the way they play. Yeah, yeah that's what I mean. I, I love I, watching them. Yeah, yeah <laughs> but I really like the games that uh, there's the they're technical so ability and they're lovely people as well. So I don't know. I don't think our our mindset really changed all yeah. that much, but um, you know, we played a. Uh, the same, you know, 13, 14 players for three straight group games. So I definitely felt like in that round of 16 game that the fatigue was starting to set in. And although a lot of that is mental, um, you know, our game against Sweden it was tough anyways. But yeah, it's just so crazy to look back on it. But um, like P, looking back on, on Germany's journey at the World Cup, um, obviously, unfortunately, you weren't there. Um, I've been in that position. It's literally the worst position ever. But at the same time, you're like, oh, I just want them to win so bad. Um, and obviously, Germany's just such a talented, talented country. Every single time a massive tournament comes around, they're, you know, they're a threat for, for the title. Um, but what was your perspective on, you know, how the team did and, and watching them play and things like that? Um, yeah, I think obviously the outcome was quite disappointing for for us um, as a country as well because um, now that we got out in the quarterfinals, we're not qualified for the Olympics yeah. and that takes away a big tournament. And um, of crazy. course, with um, like with the players we got, of course we we will always want to win and um, go further than we did. But yeah, I can't really say a lot about like inside of the team because I just wasn't there. But from the outside, um, of course, I watched the games and yeah, I think it just didn't um, go for us in like in in like the games. It was a bit unlucky, but also um, we had a couple of young players in who are who were doing really well, but maybe need more experience. And I think um, so. What I've heard from it, um, yeah. There's areas where where we still can improve, and we have to make sure that we keep working. Because you can always say, yeah, Germany, they always have good players and always really competitive. But other t other countries are doing good work as well, and I think you could really see that at, at this tournament that um, every country is gotten so much better and so much more competitive so you can never stop working so I think that's what we need to focus on to really get the graft in and, and be on top um, every single tournament or everything else. Yeah. It's crazy to look at um, like you mentioned young players on the roster I feel like when you look across the tournament and see how many teams had such young rosters like across the board obviously the game has so many like veterans right now I feel like the women's game the women's international game is in this really weird place of like transition between this generation of players like I don't know let's take the US team for example like when it comes to them selecting the roster for the the Olympics 
next year. It's an 18 player roster, and there's going to be so many players left off that roster. Same with you guys. If you, I mean, if GB qualifies, the fact that there's only 18 spots between, what is it, three nations? Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales, and England. Oh my gosh, four. Yeah. yeah. And there's going to be. There's so many players coming up now. Like double digit numbers of, of players that probably would make any other team in the world left off that <laughs> roster because the roster's so small. But, you know, like transitioning from, from the World Cup to the Olympics, what would it mean, you know, as a nation to have a women's football team representing GB next next summer in Tokyo? I think it's, uh, we've, we've been fighting for it for, for a while. Obviously, um, 2012 was incredible. Um, the fact that it was, was in London was why we qualified and why, you know, they made it happen. So that was incredible to be involved in that. And obviously, we did qualify for, to- uh, for what was the one before? Rio. Rio. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it didn't quite work out um, and that's why uh, Sweden went through um, so for us to be in a position to be going to Tokyo as Team GB it, it's an incredible achievement um, and yeah it's going to be so tight um, with over those four nations there's so many talented individuals um, and you know just in our England squad who went to the World Cup including Ellie who was our 24th we had 24 players yeah. and now you've got cut that to 18 but then you've also got included Scotland Ireland, Northern Ireland and Wales who have, who have players yeah. that, are, that are definitely and obviously the positions. We, we've got a very talented Scottish Man City yeah. player so it's, you're okay yeah <laughs> so yeah it's going to be it's going to be tough it's, the Olympics is such a and we, Pauline and I were just talking about this a little bit ago because Germany obviously won gold in, at the 2016 yeah. Olympics yeah. yeah they beat us I'm not better not better at all slightly a little I better I can see her face <laughs> you can't see my face <laughs> um, <Still> and <laughs> it's like so so difficult to win to win gold and granted it's a, sh- it's a smaller tournament it's a shorter tournament but you also have less players like we just talked about and it's so short yeah I was going to say it's rapid like, back, it? to back to back to yeah. back games um, and a lot of travel so much travel yeah but you're you're representing your country like with all the other athletes in your country and I think that must that, be like, great yeah. I feel like as a kid, I mean, all of us must have played multiple sports growing up. Yeah. What was the we- like the weirdest sport you played? Like, if you think back to your childhood now, you're like, why did I do that? A sport? Yeah. I did, like, gymnastics, but I was it's just not, like... It's not weird, I guess. Maybe maybe the, the just the sport you look back on and you think, I'm just, that was never going anywhere for me. Did you have that? Uh, I played, yeah, like lacrosse. I did lacrosse was, for like one summer and I was like, I no. See, that is not a sport. Yeah, no, offense, a no offense. No, that's okay. That. Some, I have some, I have some I, really, I just really good lacrosse I friends. I'd be very, very good at that one. Um, I'm trying to think of what. We have something called rounders. Oh, rounders is like baseball, yeah, right? Yeah, but like. British people are weird. Like, yeah. just call it baseball. <laughs> like, it's not. It's not. It's shorter. We, we it's played shorter. rounders last year. It's oh, yeah. As a warm up. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. That was really bad. Um, but anyways, yeah, tension, tension over. Um, yeah, the Olympics is just just a really crazy, cool event to be a part of. Um, so definitely looking forward forward to that next summer. Hopefully, if selected, if selected. Um, so we chatted a little bit about childhood and uh, some sports we played, but over the course of your careers, some longer than others. Um, Why did you look at me? I didn't look <laughs> at you. <laughs> Everyone, I didn't look at her. You can't see me. Um, you both suffered pretty significant injuries at some point in your career. Knock on wood. Thank you. I, I haven't. And I hope for, for all of us here, you can hear us knocking on wood, so you know what happened. Um, we, we hope that nothing ever happens again. But we'll start with you, Pauline, because... I came in to, to the team here while you were still out with your injury. Just so if, you, if you're not familiar with Pauline's injury, um, in the 2017 season, in her second game of the club, so she'd just gotten here, and her first start... Gosh, um, 30 minutes in, she broke her leg. Before that, I scored my first goal. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Important detail. Strikers, strikers, strikers. By the way, there's were three strikers at this table. <laughs> Anyone would be really excited. Well, two to strikers and a right back. <laughs> <laughs> Not, not, for, not forever. <laughs> Jealousy watching you guys finish the ball on the goal yesterday. Just going to be one defending. Um, everyone secretly wants to be a striker. Let's be honest. Even if they won't admit it deep down. Yeah, maybe. Who doesn't the best want to score part goals? of the game? Yeah. 
Yeah. I've always wanted to try goalkeeping. That looks fun. But Anyways. Yeah, anyway, sorry. Uh, so, yeah, Pauline sorry. scored a first goal in that game, everyone. Um, and 30 minutes in, she broke her leg. Tibia in one place and Fibula had three different breaks. Insane. Um, the injury kept her out for 14 months. And I was very happy to be part of her return, which was very emotional and, and quite amazing. But yeah, Pauline, just talk us through that journey for you and, and what that was like. Um, yeah, hard, of course. Um, I mean, <clears throat> I was it was quite a big shock for me because I never had a really big injury before that as well. So um, yeah, and it was just um, really brutal the way it happened and also um, had to go straight to the hospital, had to get surgery, had to get all of this and of course had a lot of pain as well. Um, but yeah, just yeah, try to get on with it at, as fast as I can because there's no point in like regretting anything or like being angry about it because then you can't move forward. So I just try to like accept it and then um, yeah, I worked really hard. Um, worked really hard in, in, in the gym and uh, in rehab and just yeah, tried to set little goals because yeah. you can't set like the big goal and then you just get frustrated because yeah, you're not say, getting it's there. Yeah, super disappointed when you're like, yeah, and I'm coming back in 14 months. Yeah, so, so I have that goal. you can't you can't do that. So it was like the little steps, more like trying to walk again yeah. and then um, trying to do little things in the gym. And then I think I I was running after seven months. I could do my first jog on the pitch and Ooh. that was <laughs> it was long, but um, yeah. I I had really great support at the club, yeah. of course, with um, all the medical stuff and all the team as well. And yeah, my family supported me, so that was quite helpful. And um, yeah, just try to be positive and also seeing the good things in it yeah. that yeah. might bring. Because um, I believe that there's always positive things yeah. in everything that happens. So um, yeah, just um, try to learn from it and get like mentally stronger yeah. and. Um, yeah, it was just really nice to get back after 14 months, which was long. But um, do you feel like you have yeah. a, a different um, outlook and gratitude for playing the game? Definitely. Like these days now, I'm just really happy to be out on the pitch and train every day and not have anything um, physically to complain <laughs> about. And I think, um, yeah, sometimes you forget it. Um, but I just think back at the time when you couldn't do it and. Um, yeah, I'm just so grateful and, and thankful that I, I can play without any problems yeah. at all. And yeah, well, if you've ever it. seen Pauline play, you always see the giant smile on her face. So um, I'm sure that that had had something to do with it. But she's flying now. Yeah. Um, I question having never broke anything in my legs. Is it? I figure it's different coming back from from a bone injury versus like a ligament or muscle injury. Like how it feels like even if you've just I don't know like pulled or partially torn a muscle before yeah. even if it's like a short term injury did you have a rod in your leg? Um, a nail you mean? Yeah like like a like a pole or a bar yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I have I have a nail I, it's still in there so I had a long nail and screws and okay. the screws got taken out because okay, they just... were bothering me a bit but the nail's gonna stay in there and um, yeah it's, it's a weird feeling really sometimes I still feel the, the place where it Broke. Really? So yeah, especially when it's like getting colder or something, oh, like the weather, yeah. I can feel it, or when I do like wrong step, it's getting less and less, which yeah. is good. Yeah. And I don't think about it like every training or something. Just sometimes I still feel it, but I'm quite glad that is that it's like the bone and the bone is healed, yeah. and with like ligaments or muscles, you always yeah, have like yeah, a swelling or something. Yeah. And I don't have any of that, so um, yeah, it took me a while because also muscle wise you need to like learn or teach your body how yeah. to play football again <laughs> but um yeah got there in the end <laughs> she's back and she's flying this season scoring loads of goals for us so um ellen you've had your your injury issues um give us a little bit of a of a taste of what that was like for you um <clears throat> interesting yeah. um yeah so 
I yeah, I've done my ACL kind of twice on either leg, um, and just recently um, I did ten days of preseason, so that was that was good. That was the most bizarre thing that I've ever witnessed. Yeah, because I was right there when it happened. Oh, yeah, I know. You know, us, us strikers, strikers. I've been asking for that more striker time. Striker striker for so long. I know. Of preseason, and I didn't even do one shot. I didn't even control the ball. No, you I just didn't. went. Whoop, and then, well, but, well, it was you were so casual too. You were like, ow that hurt and I was like are you okay and you're like my knee just doesn't feel right and you were just so casual about it and I, I mean people sometimes call me dramatic <laughs> yeah, it's up for debate um, I probably would have lost my mind yeah. But anyways, it was it was super bizarre. Continue. Continue. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, my my most recent one was yeah I tore my meniscus, but in a bit of a weird way, um, uh, and it got kind of got caught in in my my joint of my knee. So I was kind of locked a little bit. So I basically had to have surgery to repair my meniscus or take it out basically. But yeah, I think I think it's just um, I think it's similar to what Pauline said. Just the you just got to keep a positive mentality really, and just focus on the little things that you can do and not really get bogged down with what you can't do or, or be kind of too negative because I think that's it's just draining yeah. because you've got to focus on the rehab and you know you want to get back to playing football because you do really miss it when you're out it, and obviously it's, it's hard to watch your team play at the same time but you're really excited because you want them to do well at the same time so um, yeah it is challenging but um, yeah having a good support network is great and obviously yeah, all the staff um, at City were great and, and teammates were, were lovely at the same time so yeah I think it's important to have that, that network of people and, and support um, and just keeping, yeah, real, like a real positive mentality. Positivity seems to be a, a common a common thread. Yeah, if not, you just make it hard for yourself, and yeah. there's no point. Yeah, you can't change it. Exactly. Um. So yeah, these two have have just flown back from injury. You wouldn't even know you were injured. You came back, and you were just right back in it. I tried. I tried. You've done great. <laughs> um. Well. I think that that's all I had. We've demolished our cakes. I mean, not cakes, um, spinach. <laughs> and kale. <laughs> kale and all the necessary things to be, to be a professional athlete. Just sounds like um, and vegan, our so. coffees. But thank you guys so much for joining me for episode one. That was cool. Thanks yeah. for inviting us. Um, I hope you all listeners enjoy and i'm sure these two will feature on another podcast at some point because if i don't bother well, so if I, much fun if i bother them long enough they'll just do it to to get me to stop she bothering pays them really great money as well, so, uh, <laughs> oh yeah don't let's get talk any about ideas. that <laughs> just don't get any ideas but um yeah this uh this episode was brought to you by myself uh brewing Brewing with Becky, Pauline Bramer, Ellen White, and of course the lovely Tack Coffee House. If you're around Manchester, you have to check it out. Um, it's on Tariff Street. They do lovely cakes, uh, coffees, anything you want, uh, food. So until next time, this has been this has been great. So see you soon. Signing off from from Tack Coffee House. Bye. 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 Give me